okay, I think it's creepy. But, you know. Okay. We can talk about this idea of a reference angle. And the definition of a reference angle is um, of any angle theta in standard position is the acute angle, which we're going to say theta prime, uh, formed by the terminal ray of theta and the x-axis. I drew three little graphs here because we're going to look at what do the reference angle look like in quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Why do we skip quadrant one? Because in quadrant one, all the angles are already acute angles, right? Like in quadrant one, the angle that you draw is its own reference angle. If you drew a 30 degree angle, then the reference angle is 30 degrees. Like we don't need a reference angle in quadrant um, one. Um, part of your homework today says find the reference angle. And so you want to make sure you understand uh, what this definition says, and I think it's helpful if we draw this. So let's just draw an angle in quadrant two um, for this first one here, and it doesn't really matter where, as long as we have it ending over here in quadrant two. And so this is my theta. Definition of a reference angle is the acute angle formed by the terminal ray of theta and the x-axis. So you always have to think about how can I draw this into the x-axis to make an acute angle. And in quadrant two, I think it's pretty, uh, hopefully you can see it here, that if this is the terminal ray, if I drew this down to the x-axis, that would be my reference angle, which I kind of hinted at yesterday of talking about that little triangle that we could draw in. That would be theta prime or your reference angle. In quadrant two, if you knew what theta was, how could you find what the reference angle is? Subtract it from 180 degrees if we were talking about degrees. So I could say um, 180 degrees minus theta equals theta prime. Do you agree with that statement? If that was 120 degrees, then that means my reference angle would be 60 degrees. Or in radians, we could say that psi minus theta equals theta prime. You don't have to memorize that. You should just be able to think about it. Like, what would I do to figure out what my reference angle is? Now draw one in quadrant three. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly my angle as long as it's in quadrant three. There is only one reference angle for every angle. So it's important that you uh, read what it means to be a reference angle. It's the acute angle drawn from the terminal ray to the x-axis. So here's what it's not. You can't say, oh, I'll just connect this to this, and this must be theta prime, because that does not go to the x-axis. That's the y-axis. So you might say, oh, well, I'll just connect it from here all the way to here. No, because that is not an acute angle, right? And so this kind of seems like it breaks the rules of talking about positive and negative angles. But we're going to talk about just this angle here, from the terminal ray to the x-axis, or if you want to think about from the x-axis to the terminal ray. But this angle, from just here to here, would be the only way that you could draw in an acute angle that connects the x-axis to the terminal ray of that graph, which would be theta prime. How could I find out what theta prime is in that problem? Theta minus pi equals theta prime. Do you agree with that? Because theta is from zero all the way around to here. So if we just subtract pi out, that would just leave us what's left over. Or in degrees, we could say theta minus 180 degrees equals theta prime. Last one, quadrant four. All the way around here. Theta. Reference angle from the terminal ray to the x-axis. You see that we're just going to connect that all the way around the circle now. Like it's just going to be from here back up to the x-axis. Again, why does it have to be that? Because you can't go to the y-axis. 
And if you tried to connect back to this part of the x-axis, that wouldn't be acute anymore. Um, so that's why that would be a reference angle. And what could I do to find what theta prime is on this one? Now, would theta plus theta prime equal 2 pi on this one? Like, that would be the whole circle. So could I take 2 pi minus theta would give me theta prime? Or 360 degrees minus theta equals theta prime? This is what I talk about when I talk about triangles. Tomorrow I'm going to teach you to use a circle, and then tomorrow you have this big decision of your life. Not really, because you can use both. I use both. Um, but tomorrow is like, you get to decide, do I like to do a circle better, or do I like triangles better? Today I'm just showing you how to do this with triangles, and then tomorrow you can say, oh, being a circle is so much better. I just love making circles. But I still have a few triangle people hanging around that uh, we have to discuss. Um, I like to show you both because both are mathematically sound methods to do these problems and different teachers, different professors teach uh, different ways and so uh, I want you to at least be aware of this process and I think it helps make sense of where the, uh, where the unit circle comes from is another reason I teach this. Also I teach this because sometimes there are just questions that have nothing to do with the unit circle that just talk about finding reference angles and sketching in both the angle and its reference angle. Um, they could be nice angles like the ones we drew out yesterday, or they could just be some random angle uh, like 309 degrees, which is not one of the such angles that we drew out uh, yesterday. So I think it's helpful to draw the angle first, and then you can kind of think about what would the reference angle be. Um, and notice it says sketch theta and theta prime, which means you want to label those uh, on the graph. Go ahead, sir. I mean, those are more different things. degrees going to be in. Yeah, and if you ever forget, right, like if you're labeling this, think about this is 180 degrees. This is in, since this is in degrees, we're going to work in degrees. If it's in radians, I'm going to work in radians. Uh, this is 180 plus another 90, which is 270. So 309 is going to be somewhere over in here. So you want to kind of be accurate. Some people on their uh, quiz that we took when I had to draw the angle in, like you got the right quadrant, but you really were kind of not very accurate. But I was very lenient. I kind of drew in what the right angle should be. Um, but just try to think about if this is 270, right? We broke that up into three segments yesterday, like into increments of 30 degrees. So like 300 would be right here. So I'm going to say, oh, that's kind of off, but you know, somewhere definitely closer to 270 than up there at 360. And I'm going to draw that angle in. And you could either say theta here, or you could say that's 309 degrees. But since it's already labeled theta, I'm just going to label it theta. And based on what we just did before, theta prime is going to be this part, right? Like connecting from that terminal ray back up would be theta prime. How could I find, or what is the measure of theta prime? This is 309 degrees, and I know all the way around is 360. Does it make sense that theta prime is going to be 360 degrees minus 309 degrees? Or 51 degrees? 51 degrees, which you could write that forever. What's really cool about reference angles is the sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent of the reference angle is the same as this angle. So that's where our special triangle, that's where the unit circle comes into play here. Um, so let's do one in radians, 3 pi fourths. 3 pi fourths is one of those special angles that we drew in yesterday. Um, 3 pi fourths, is that bigger than pi or smaller than pi? Smaller, it's 3 fourths of pi. What quadrant is that going to be in? Pi, pi halves. So 3 pi fourths is going to be where? Quadrant 2? We're at in quadrant 2. Right in the middle? Do you agree with that? Because this would be 1 pi fourths, 2 pi fourths. So, like right here would be 3 pi fourths. So 
again, drawing the reference angle in from the terminal ray to the x-axis, I can see right away that my reference angle is right there. And what would the measure of that reference angle be? Pi fourth, because that's how much is left to get here, right? Or if you didn't see that, you could say theta prime equals pi minus 3 pi fourth, which equals pi fourth, which equals 45 degrees, which is why reference angles are so important. Because what does that mean? That means to find the trig functions of 3 pi fourth, I could use a 45, 45, 90 triangle and the ratios of a 45, 45, 90 triangle and get those values. And so that's why reference angles are important um, in terms of finding values of, of trig functions. Questions about that? The other thing that you're going to do today is you're going to use these triangles, these special angles, uh, to evaluate some trig functions uh, before I show you a circle smile. So let's. Let's try something. So I, I kind of put some, some steps here. I don't know that you need to write these down if, if you want to just try, try one of these. But if you are looking at doing this without a calculator, without a calculator, when we have a test next week, just like the quiz, you're going to have one section that is no calculator and one section that is with calculator. And questions like this, when I ask you to find trig values of special angles, that means multiples of 30 degrees, multiples of 60 degrees, multiples of 45 degrees, the ones who are special triangles, those will all be on things without a calculator. The big thing that's different from our quiz to this is that now we're outside of quadrant one, which means there are more options than 30, 60, 45, because it could be anywhere around the circle. So make sure you pay attention to what quadrant you're in. So I put a fixed appropriate sign. That just means like pay attention to quadrants. Because remember, different quadrants have different values. I draw the triangle in, which means I put the sign based on whether I'm on the negative side of the x-axis or the negative part of the y-axis. And so let's do one in radians, and then we'll do one in degrees. Uh, and again, hopefully we're getting more comfortable uh, working with both radians and degrees. Uh, but step one is kind of figure out where you are and figure out your reference angle. If this is without a calculator, your reference angle will be 30 degrees, 60 degrees, or 45 degrees, because those are our two special triangles, uh, those ratios of the triangles that I wanted you to learn. So five pi thirds, is that bigger than pi or smaller than pi? Bigger than pi. Is it bigger than two pi? No, so that's good. So we're somewhere um, quadrant three or quadrant four. Is this bigger than pi and a half? Yeah, because it's like pi and two thirds. Do you agree with me on that? Are we doing better thinking about these angles? I'm just saying that. <laughs> and again, we drew these out yesterday. So those two circles that I made you draw yesterday that we didn't really use that much on your homework. Those might be helpful today if you're looking at your homework and struggling to figure out where these angles are. But we said um, pi, uh, 4 pi thirds is down here. 5 pi thirds, I believe, would be um, same color too. something like this would be 5 pi thirds. The 6 pi thirds would be here. 5 pi thirds. Which means, how much is left for my reference angle? Pi thirds. You with me on that? Pi thirds is what in degrees? 60 degrees. All right? That's the kind of part you want to think about today. What is my reference angle? And if you want to write pi thirds here, you can. I wish I had a thinner marker. Can I make this thinner? Hmm. Third or 60 degrees. So I can draw in my little triangle. You can make the noise if you want. <laughs> this is where the ratios of that 30, 60, 90 triangle come into play. What's the ratios of 30, 60, 90 triangle? 1, 2, square root of 3. Remember, the biggest number is the hypotenuse. So 2 is the biggest number. So I know right away that this goes, that that's a 2. I know that the smallest side is 1. The smallest side is the one across from the 30 degrees, which would be down here. So that means that's a 1. 
and this has to be square root of 3, but because I'm down here, do you agree that has to be negative square root of 3? Any clue at all of where I'm kind of getting these numbers from? So it all goes back to those special triangles. If you know the special triangle, you find the reference angle. This is 60 degrees. So I know the ratios for 30, 60, 90 are 1, 2, square root of 3. you got to make sure the sides match up and make sure if you're in a negative part that the negative sign goes there. That's what I mean by a fixed appropriate sign. So it would be over the, uh, Yes, because if it was up here at 60 degrees, oh, of course it's not looking, then yes, it would be positive. Because it's all about where you are on the x to y coordinates. Sure. So, okay, if you know that, now you just have to look at this and say, what is the cosine of this? And you can do Sokotoa, because you have a triangle, or you can do the what we talked about yesterday. Either way, cosine is going to be either adjacent over uh, hypotenuse or um, x over r. Either way, one half is the answer to that. They could ask you any of the trig functions there, and we could do it based on that the reference angle is 60 degrees. And so that means that the cosine of 5 pi thirds is the same as the cosine of pi thirds. So what about this one? Oh, too bad it's going to be the same. That's okay. Negative degrees. I'm not a big fan of negative degrees because it means I have to think about going backwards and things get confused sometimes. So the really cool thing with angles is you don't have to deal with negative degrees. What could I do that could turn this into a positive degree but keep it in the same spot? AKA, how could I find a coterminal angle of this function? Uh, 2 pi, but that's not going to work here because it's in degrees. Uh, but you just got to change that to 360 because I'm in terms of degrees here. But yes, I'm just going to, I want the positive angle instead of the negative angle. So instead of talking about tangent of negative 240, I'm going to add 360 to that. And what's that the same as? What's negative 240 degrees plus 360 degrees? So negative 240 is the same as saying the tangent of 120. So I like to change my negative angles to positive angles because I'm a positive gal and I like positive things. <laughs> you don't think that's true. So what happens on this one? Um, 120 degrees, can we figure out where that's going to be graphed? We we'll do better with degrees, right? I really do better with radians because I've been doing tricks for too long. But I can do 120. This is 90, so 120 would be like 30 more than that, right? So that would be roughly like right here would be 120 degrees. So what would my reference angle be? Um, and also with 60, so don't don't be uh, creeped out that you get 60 a lot, because it's either going to be 30, 60, or 45 every time, uh, the reference angle. So this is also going to be 60 degrees. But now I'm in quadrant 2, so if I drop down my uh, triangle, do, 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 do. what's the side across from 60 going to be on a 30, 60, 90 triangle? Square root of 3, is this, is this a positive or a negative square root of 3? Positive, because this is the positive part of the y. What's the hypotenuse always? And the smallest side is 1, but pay attention to where I am. This is the negative side of the x-axis. So do you agree that that's going to be negative 1? So my angle right here is 60 degrees. What is the tangent of this angle? Tangent is... Yeah, because it would, it would be square root of 3 over negative 1 or just negative square root of 3. I feel about that. Did you just use a circle or did you just use a triangle? <laughs> the square root of 3 part? This? Come tell me what you're talking about. This line right here? Yes, yeah, so this is my 90, right? That's why this side is 2, right? This is the angle I'm looking at, though. That's, like, that's why my opposite side is square 3 and my adjacent is negative 1, and that is my hypotenuse. 
No? You see that? It's like I'm not understanding your question. No, 2 is bigger than square root of 3. The hypotenuse is always 2. Um, I think, I don't even know. That might be it. We think that might make it for another. Oh, no, here we go. There we go. Something else. Some of the ones on your homework might be bigger than 2 pi. That's what I was going to make up. And we might do that anyway. There's extra time. Um, or maybe we'll just do one and one for your homework. Questions like this, I could also give you uh, without a calculator, maybe. I don't know, there's some good uh, numbers here. But this has nothing to do with the special angle because negative 15 over 8 is not one of my special ratios in my triangle, right? My triangles are 1, 1 square 2 and 1, 2 square 3. So when you see something that has other numbers in it, you got to kind of say, okay, this is not those special angles. i got to think what else I can do to solve this problem. Uh, we kind of did this before, except for now we're looking at all around the circle. What quadrant am I in? Um, if I gave you one trig value, you should be able to give me the other ones. But now that we could be anywhere in the circle, they have to give you some extra information. So questions like this, they tell me that tangent equals negative 15 over 8. And also they tell me that sine is less than 0. Based on those two things, you should be able to tell me what um, quadrant am I in. Um, sine is which, uh, or what's the ratio for sine in terms of x, y's, and r's? Y of R. That's the same. So if sine is Y over R, and they tell me that sine is less than zero, do you agree they're telling me that Y is less than zero? Which means what are my two quadrants where Y is less than zero? Quadrant three and quadrant four. They also tell me that tangent is negative. If tangent is negative, um, is X going to be zero also, or does X have to be positive? Everybody agree with that statement? Because if x was negative, do you agree that if a, a negative y and a negative x would make this a positive tangent? So you have to think about those ratios. Think about what quadrant you're in. Um, based on this, I know I'm in quadrant 4. I also know that that means that tangent, which is y over x, I know that that means the y is negative 15 and the x is positive 8. I didn't know which one the negative went with until I knew that y was negative. Which means I'm going to draw a picture. You don't always have to, but I like pictures. Again, it doesn't really matter if you make the marks here. I'm just going to say that's negative 15 and that's 8. And I'm going to draw in a lovely little picture here. I'm just making numbers up, really. Negative 15 and 8. Can I figure out what my radius is? Or my hypotenuse, whatever you want to call it? Yes, because r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Which means I probably wouldn't give you this without a calculator because I don't want to have to make you multiply so much. But um, that would be uh, 64 plus 225. Two eighty nine. Is that right? Which I think is seventeen. Is that right? When I was in some math class, I forget what grade it was. Some our teacher made us memorize all the square roots of the twenty, and I just mistaken the three and pulled down them all right. Nineteen. I don't know what nineteen is off the top of my head, but it's probably that's what I missed it on. And it was, just, it was like way, you, it was way too old of a class to say for you to teach me that. It was like algebra teacher. Like, why is that in math with me? If I know this, I can now find the other trig functions very easily. So the hard part of this is figuring out what quadrant am I in, making sure the signs are correct. Because now I can just go through here and find all the other trig functions. It says find the six trig functions, but they really gave me one already. But I can say that the sign of this angle this little triangle here would be um, y over r or negative 15 over 17. Cosine would be 8 over 17. They already gave me tangent, but I'll write it again. 
So the secant would be negative 17 over 15. Secant would be 17 over 8. And cotangent would be negative 8 over 15. When they give you a negative trig function, don't always just assume that the negative goes with the top number, right? That's why you have to think about uh, the other information they give you. Because you can, when you write a negative fraction, normally you just write the negative with the top number, even if it went with the bottom. And so that's why they have to give you that extra piece of information uh, on these problems. Questions about that? Let's, uh, I think the next slide is homework, um, and let's look at one together uh, as a big angle just because people always get stressed about this. Oh, just kidding, there's one more. Never ending. <laughs> It'll be easier when we talk about the inner circle, but we're going to talk about it anyway. This says um, tangent is undefined and theta is between pi and 2 pi. Pi, 2 pi. What do we know about the ratio for tangent? telling me it's undefined, what do I know about x? It means it's zero, right? Because that's how I get undefined. I'm dividing by zero. Where between pi and 2 pi would I get that x equals zero? We agree? 3 pi halves is the only place between pi and 2 pi where the x is going to be zero. Every point on this axis would have a x value of 0, which means it really doesn't matter what you pick for the y value. We could be very um, symbolic here and, and mathy and say this would be every point down here, would it be 0, negative y? Do you agree with that statement? Yes? Kind of weird to think about this because you can't really draw a triangle in when that is your point, right? But if we use the formula for r, r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Can I plug in 0 for x and negative y to find out what r is? That would be 0 plus 1, which is just 1, which means this line itself like the radius, I need to think about, can't really draw in my triangle. But I can do my ratios. If r is 1, x is 0, and y is, <laughs> why did I put 1 there, kids? Sometimes you guys just let me go, and you never even say, I'm fixing, that makes no sense. I was doing unit circles. <laughs> that would be y, not 1, right? So r would be y. So, so bear with me for just a second. This is like a proof almost. So exciting. Sine is y over r. What is y in this problem? Negative y. What is r in this problem? y. And what's negative y over y? Negative 1. No matter what your y value is, if you are at 3 pi halves, whether you're at 0, negative 1, or 0, negative 100, the sign will always be negative 1 because your r value will always be positive y and your y value will be negative y. And your cosine, no matter what y is at 3 pi halves, the cosine is x over r or 0 over y the cosine is always zero. We're going to talk more about these um, special angles tomorrow, but I just wanted to kind of make you think about it before I just give you the answers. Tangent is y over x, which we already know is undefined. And then we can just flip them over. What's cosecant going to be? What's the reciprocal of negative one? Negative one. What's the reciprocal of zero? Undefined. What would the reciprocal of undefined b. 
zero because now zero is on top. So you're going to see that when you're at these special angles, the axes, you're always going to get zeros, ones, undefined, and negative ones because it always worked out that R is uh, Y or X when you're when you're working on those. Okay. I'm going to do another one. Your homework's 21 through 48, but 39 and 42 are assigned tomorrow, so I didn't want to just write all the numbers out and say, so I said 21 through 48, but you can skip 39 and 42. So if you want to say, what, 20, 21 through 36, and then 45 and 48, that would be what you're doing. The first ones, they just give you an angle, a special angle, and they ask you which point might correspond to it. Draw the picture. Figure out which ones would give you the values, so don't freak out too much about those. But then 27, 30, 33, 36, those are using the reference angles. If it's not a reference angle, if it's bigger than 2 pi, remember you can just keep subtracting 2 pi until you get back to an angle that you know, and I'm sure that we'll talk about that some tomorrow. Um, we don't have, well, it's probably going to be, right? Is it up in three minutes? Try these.